Harry Beshama was born on 19 January 1819 and was named by his godfather, Henry Caslon, who had employed Henry's father as a punch cutter, although the elder Bassema was an engineer and a type founder. Henry was skilled in mechanics and had an inventive mind from an early age, and though he was self-taught, he showed extraordinary skills in the invention. He learned metallurgy at the foundry of his father's type of work, also helped in the production of gold chains. Henry made his first fortune with a series of 16 powered machines he made, which was used for making bronze powder for the manufacturing of gold paints. After examining the bronze powder in Nuremberg, he then copied and made an improvement of the product that it could then be made on a single production line. He kept his newfound process a secret with only his immediate family gaining knowledge of his work and access to his factory. It was an alternative to a patent. The Nuremberg powder was sold for five pounds per round, but he sold his new bronze powder for half a crown, using the profits from the sale to pursue other inventions. He then made a ribbon plate glass in 1848 and patented the method, but it yielded no success commercially. Not deterred, he designed furnaces that he later used for his new steel making process. During this time, the steel used for ordnance was expensive. Henry worked on it and manufactured cheap steel from 1850 to 1855 when he patented the method. He described the process in a meeting of the British Association in Cheltenham as the manufacture of iron without fuel. After listening to Henry speak on the process of his work, James Nashmith, who had been working on an idea similar to Henry's, abandoned his own project. Although Henry did acknowledge the effort of Nashmith and offered him one third of the value of his patent, Nashmith, who was about to retire, turned the offer down. The process of steel production continued. A Swedish ironmaster, Goran Frederick Goransson, used pure charcoal pig iron to create the first good steel, only after he had tried several times. Seeing the result of Goran, Henry was encouraged to try making pure iron made from Cumberland hematite. Henry had limited success with his trial because the quantity of carbon was difficult to control. He then partnered with Robert Forrest Moshet, who had previously carried out lots of experiments. They tried it again and came to an improved quality of the finished product. Henry introduced the improved system to makers to try, but was rebuffed and eventually undertook the exploitation of the process himself. He later partnered with W and J Galloway and Sons and others to begin the manufacturing of steel. They made progress with the production and enlarged the operations until the competition increased, giving them recognition among steel traders who also came to the awareness that the Henry Bessemer and Co. was underselling them. The business grew as most industries now prefer to make their own steam, thereby purchasing the licenses. This was so much that William received sums of royalties exceeding millions of pounds sterling. In March 1898, Henry died in Denmark Hill, London, and was buried at the West Norwood Cemetery. In his honor, the Fountain Public House was renamed in 2009 as the Bessemer House in Sheffield City. For his great contribution to the Steel City, he was listed as one of the top 10 technological innovators in 2003. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.